All right, guys, I haven't done a video in a long time because I've just been procrastinating too much. And, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, I was just kind of relaxing in the summer. Anyway, today we're going to go over another lead code problem for Google. This is called step-by-step -step directions from a binary tr no, tree node to another. So you're given a binary tree, right, and they represent numbers from one to N, okay? And then... You're also given the start value and the end value, which is the destination value. Okay, so we have a destination start and an end. Now we what we need to do is we need to find the shortest path starting from node S and and then and ending at node T. So what that means is that yeah, so we're given we're given the starting node and the ending node and we need to find the shortest path. Okay. So we also want to generate the step by step directions when we're going through the path. So what this means is that um, L, R, and U are the letters that we want to generate for our step-by-step -step directions. So L means to go from a node to the left child, R means to go to the right child, and U means to go to the parent. So if we're going to go look at this, um, let's actually copy this image and go to paint. So in this situation, um, so here, our start node, if I, for some reason, this is not connecting, oh, whoops, my bad, sometimes I had some difficulties here. So if our start node here is three, so they said our start is three and our end is six. So this is our start and then our end is six. So we're starting at three here and then we want to end at six so you want to end at here okay so um as you can see here like the shortest path would be like going this way so if we look at three um what, what do we have to do to get to six well since they said we only could use every step there's l r and u right go left go right or go up so in for three in order to get to six right we have to go up so we went up once, right, we went up, and we went up again from one to five. And then here from five, we have to go to the right because for five to the right, to go from five to two, we're going to the right. So we're gonna go R, and then from two to six, we're going to the left, so that's L. So our answer here would be U, U, R, L, okay? And yeah, U, U, R, L. So that's the shortest path here for the output. Okay, and um, now uh, the second example is pretty much very similar. Um, if we just go from here. Um, two, in order to go from two to one, we, the only way to do this is to go to the left, right? Because there's nothing to the right and there's nothing down, nothing up. So. To go from two to one is left, so the answer would just be L. So yeah, so the two is the starting node to start, and this is the ending node, destination. Okay, so how do you do this problem? Um, one way is to actually do um, lowest common ancestor. So what that means is that we want to find the ancestor that is like they both shared, like the smallest ancestor that they both share. So if we go back to the original, problem here the original test case so if I find the lowest common so the lowest common ancestor lowest common ancestor LCA right lowest common ancestor it just means is that um, what is like the smallest parent that both of them share right so in this case this six and six and three they both share five as like the lowest common ancestor as a parent right because if we were to just like try to find the parent that they both share, five is the one that is shared by three and six. And when I mean parent, I mean like the one that is above it. Um, so like if this six wasn't here, if this six wasn't actually here, instead it was like, oh uh, crap. So let's say the six was not here, but the six was like right here. Then the lowest common ancestor would be one. Okay, because they both share the common ancestor of a parent of one. But that's not the case in this case, okay? Um, but yeah, 
So what's good about it is that if you were to find the lowest common ancestor, so you find five, all you have to do is just go up like from three to five. Uh, bleh, my bad. So we find five and then we just have to find the values of both like six and three. So we just have to go down to whatever values to three and then whatever value is six. So, so here the algorithm would be like lowest common ancestor find of of three and six, which would give us five. And then now we just have to go from five and go down to three, our starting node. And then we have to go five and go down to six, our ending node. Okay. So starting node and ending node. Then um, going from five to three, since we know that this is like the, always on the left side uh, for the lowest common ancestor on the left, we could just always append up for that, right? Because it's always going to go up like it from three to five. It's never going to go down or go right or go left. So the only way you could do is just go up. So once we find the lowest common ancestor and um, go from five to three, we could just like as we travel from five to three, we could just, uh, every time we go left or right, we just replace the values with up. So in this case, going from five to three, if I go five to three, I'll go like left, left, and then I go three, right? Assuming I go five to three. So this would go left, left, three, L, L, and then we get to three. So then wh what I would do is I just replace these with ups because to go from three to five, no matter what happens, whatever, whatever, whatever I do, I have to go up, right? So for this one, you just replace these with ups. So then it'd be U, U, right? So from three to five, we'll just always go up. So this would be U and U. And then, so yeah, we place these with U, U. And then um, if I go from five to six, it would just go right and then go left, right, left. So that'll be right and then left, right? Because if I use a, do a tree traversal from five to six, the only way is to go like right and then left, right? Uh, you could use any type of tree traversal as long as you are able to like get down to your children. But yeah, this would be right and then left. And then once you have that, all you have to do is just append both of these together. So we have UU and RUL, and we just append UU and RL, and that would be our answer. Okay. So yeah, just find the lowest common ancestor between the three, the your two nodes, which will give you your parent. Then from there, just traverse downwards from that to the start node and that to the end node. Um, replace all the values of left with up, right? Because that's just, that's where you go up, right? And then, yeah, then append your two, append your two strings together and then just return. So yeah, that's basically the gist of the algorithm. Um, I could show you guys, I could make a whole video on lowest common ancestor, but here's like the algorithm, how lowest common ancestor would work. Um, so anyway, let's just, uh, let's just start here. Um, so here's a code get direction and we have the root, the start node destination. So what I do is here is I'm just going to replace the root to equal the lowest common ancestor, which is LCA of root start value and destination value. And then I have the two strings of F and S F and S just represents like, um, represents the, the d directions that we're going as we go downwards. Right. So this would be like F and this would be like S right. Or two straight. Okay. So I'll be going from, yeah, going from here. Then um, we're going to get path from um, our start value and from our root to our start value, right? And then we're going to get path from root to destination value. And each time we're going to just append it. Every time we go down, we're going to append it to our string for our F and S for our path, right? Our path. Then what we're going to do is we're going to replace all the values of F with up right? L like I said before early in this video, because no matter what, you're going to have to go up on your left node, right? For the left node, the left side to get to your parent, you have to go up. Like there's no way you could go right or down. So yeah, here we just replace the, the path for the, for F of the left node to be always up. And then I just return the, um, the two strings combined together. So F plus S concatenate together. Okay. So yeah, F and S represents the paths for both of the a string representing each of the paths 
from our root of lowest common ancestor to the starting value and root from lowest common ancestor to destination value. Okay, so that's what F and S mean. Okay, so now let's think about how to get path. Um, yeah, so this is um, this is how to get to the path. Um, let's actually go look at lowest common ancestor first because that's uh, I think that's the hard part of the, about this problem. Okay, so to get the lowest common ancestor, here's what you do. Um, so here, if the root is null, you just return null, right? The first case. Um, so if our root is equal to our start value, right? That means that we're kind of done. So like if you look at here, this. Yeah. So to get lo lowest common answer between three and six. Um, so yeah, so, whoa. Whoa, I kind of like zoomed in too much. Okay, so if I want to get three to six, right? Um, so I'm gonna go from, yeah, okay. So currently my root is at five, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the left and go to the right, okay? Um, and yeah, and then I'm gonna recursively call, just keep searching on the left node and the right node. So if my root node is equal to the start value, I'm just gonna return the root Otherwise, I'm going to return. Um, otherwise, if the, my root value is equal to destination value, I'm going to I'm going to return the root. And the reason why we do this is that we want to check like which node that we're on, if that makes sense. So, so here five is equal five is our root node, right? So we're trying to get lowest common answer three and six. So our new root node is always like the starting value of five. So this is our root. And what we're going to do is we're going to go just um, check is it equal to our start value. So five is not equal to our start value. So we, we do nothing. Then we're going to check it does it equal to our destination value. So our destination value is six, right? So, so remember three is our start, six is our destination. Okay. So this is lowest common ancestor. So but the five is not equal to any of three or six, right? Five is not equal to three or six. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left of five and uh, we're going to get, so we're going to go to the left of five. Um, the left of five is one and three. So left of five is one. Okay. So here um, I'll just, I'll just show you guys what I mean. So let's do, uh, so now, now what we're, what we're, now we did was we call it on the left side of uh, a function call five is one, right? So this is all left side five. So yeah, so we, now we have one. We're gonna go to the top. Um, is one equal to our start value? No. Is one null? No. Is one equal to our destination value? No. So then, then we're gonna go to the left of one also. So we'll give it go to three. So here it's gonna call three now. Okay. So now that we go through three, three. Okay. So that's this part. So is three equal to our start value? Uh, yeah, it is. So then we're going to return three. So this is going to return three. So this is going to return three. And then, um, so once this return three, it's going to go to the right of one, right? Remember the right of one. So one's right is going to be null. One's right is going to be null. So one's right is null. Uh, they will come back to the top here and it's going to return null. So then we have three and then null. So three is going to be our, our left side and null is going to be in our right side. So here it's saying that if the left side is not equal to null and the right side is not equal to null, then we're going to return the current root value, the current node that we're on. But here our left side is not equal to null. So we're just going to return the left side. So this is going to return three, right? So yeah, the common answer to three is just three. So then this is going to return three. Okay, so it returns three. So now, now that, that this returns three, we need to go to the right side of one. Yeah, so yeah, so that returned that. So the whole thing returns three to the top. And then we have to do the right side of five, which is two. So what is two? 
LCA of 2, so this is like another recursive call. Okay. And at 2, is 2 equal to our um, star value or destination value? Nope. Right, 2 is not equal to that. So then it's going to call on 2's left and 2's right. So 2's left is 6 and 2's right is 4, so it's going to do LCA on 6 and then LCA on 4. Okay, 6 goes to here, uh, 6 is equal to our destination value, so we return 6. So this is going to return um, 6. Then, uh, yeah, then 4, 4 is not equal to our, uh, any of these, so it's going to recursively call 4 with both nulls. And then if they're both nulls, it's going to return um, null, null. So they're both, the, both of these are null. Um, the left is not equal to null, so this is not, it'll return right. So this will just return null. So then since fours return nulls, so four returns null, so then this is going to go to null. So then we have six and null. Six and null. If it's six and null, it's not going to return null. So here, six is not equal to null, so then it returns six. So this whole thing returns six. So then here we have three and six, okay? So then our left side is three and the right side is six. So both of them are not null, right? Both of these are not null. So then it's gonna return um, five because five was the root when three and six were called when we were traversing, okay? So yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty a really fast approach of me going through lowest common ancestor. I'll, I'll, I'll probably make a, another whole video about it later on about lowest common ancestor because that's a pretty that's an algorithm that is pretty important okay all right so now that we got the lowest common ancestor uh let's just go over how to get the path from our lowest common ancestor of our root to our start value and our destination value okay so here i pass in um our lowest common ancestor of five so uh so yeah so here now that we have this we just need to pass in uh, five to each of this. So so we have our lowest common ancestor five, and then we have three, and then we have six, okay? So we have start and then destination. So here from five to three, now, now what, we're, what we're doing is we're gonna go from five to three, okay? So here, um, start value, search value is three, okay. So is five equal to three? No, is five equal to null? No. Um, so we're gonna recursively go on the left so it's going to go down to the left. So it's going to go left down here. And then what it's doing is it's going to append L to the path. So our path is now going to have L. Okay, so we went down here. Um, yeah, so it goes back to the top. Now is one equal to null? No. Is one equal to our um, three? Yeah. Our search value is three. So one is not equal to three. So this does nothing also. So then we're going to go to the left again. So, and during that time we add an L to our path path plus equal to L, so adds an L. So then this goes down again, so now we're at three. We go to the back to the top. Um, is three null? Nope. Is three equal to our search value? Yep, three is equal to three. So we return true. So then this goes back to here, and then this is true. Okay, so this returns true. Uh, returns true, true. Right, three is equal to three. Returns true. Um, now is uh is our did we find it on the left side so if we found it let's just return true okay so at this point i just return true for that so this is going to equal just return true so we found it so then at this point we do nothing because we already found it okay um so yeah now we found so we found three going through it um now let's go to the right side not right side. Now we're going to try to find six. Okay. So here, so this went LL and returned true. So this was going from five to three and it returned true LL. Okay. Hope you guys get what I'm saying. All right. Now we're going to do another thing. We're going to go from five to six now because six was our destination. So let's actually get rid of the picture again. 
I should go over topics like how to search through trees. Okay, so now we're going to go from 5 to 6. Okay, so how do we go from 5 to 6? Um, yeah, so it calls back here. Is 5 equal to null? Nope. Is 5 equal to 6? Nope. So we're going to go through the left side. So here, it's going to go to the left side. So here, right, it's going to go to the left side. Um, and adds an L. So it adds path is going to equal to L. Okay. Is so we're going to the left side here, one L. All right, is one equal to six? Nope. Is one equal to null? Nope. Um, so we're going to go to the left side again and we pass an L again. Okay, so now our path is L. Now we're at three. Okay, is three equal to six? Nope. Is three equal to null? Nope. Uh, we're going to add, go through to the left side again, pass an L, and the left side is null. Okay, so we're now we're at down here. So this is at null. All right. Uh, is is null equal to null? Yes. So here at this point it returns false. So this whole thing returned false, which means we did not find down the left side. So now is find find one equal to false? Uh, is find one equal to true? Nope. So we're done with that. Um, now at this point we're just gonna pop back. Pop back our path. So what that means is I'm not gonna go to the left side now from three. I'm gonna go to the right side. So from this. We pop this back from LL and then I'm going to go to the right side. So here we're going to search through the right side of three. So here, right side of three is null also. So we go back here is null equal to null. Yes. So equals returns false. So, uh, by the way, this is the right side of three. So it would have been LLR. So this is also false, which means we did not find it. And then here would return, uh, false. So here it, did we find it on the right side of three? Nope. So we're gonna pop it back it again. So we're gonna remove R again, and then we're gonna return false. So this is gonna return false again, so false. So now we have both falses, and this point at this point, um, yeah, it returns false. So we come back up here. I think it was on the node of one now, because we went through the left side of three and we went through the right side of three. So it's gonna go to one after it popped back again. So I think, uh, wait, LL, hold up. Yeah, okay, I think it's gonna go to the right side now. So at one, it's gonna go to the right side and it's gonna return false again because there's nothing on the right side, it's also null. So then this whole thing, it's gonna return null on LL. So here, going through the left side, it's gonna pop back them twice again. So because it's going to keep going returning null. So then at this point, after it re goes null like multiple times here, it's going to go to the right side of five because after searching through this many times, um, popping back, it's going to go to the right side of five. So when it goes to the right side of five, it's going to go to the right and we're going to add R to the right side of the path. So now let's just copy this. It's going to go to the right side of path. So here's right side of five, which is going to go to R here. And then um, from here, we're going to go to, um, did we find it? Nope. Uh, not yet. Right. So then it's going to go here. So is two equal to two equal to null? Nope. Is two equal to six? Nope. So now we're going to go to the left side. So here at from two, so we're at this point, we're at two, right? Because we went to the right side. So it's two equal to null, nope, is two equal to six, nope. So we're gonna go to the left side. So it's gonna go to the left side here. And then from here, it adds to the left side of the path here. So it's gonna add L here and it goes to the six. So, so now at six, is six equal to null, nope, is six equal to six? Yep. So then from here, um, it just returns true. So now that we have this, the path is gonna be RL and returns true. Um, if it didn't return true, let's say assume that it didn't return true, right? It would ha it would go to the right side of two again. So yeah, basically what it's doing, it's it's going to the left and the right and the left and the right until we actually find the node that we want, we are searching for. So that's that's basically what it's doing. Um, yeah. Okay. So once this is done, it returns true. So now we have R and L for this part. So here, get path. Of, of of the first path 
of f is going to be uh, the first path of f is ll and then the second path of the path is rl so now we have um, f is going to equal to ll and then uh, s is going to equal to rl right f of s f and s are like the, the paths of going from five to three and five to six all right, so now that we're at here, um, what I do is I just replace all the values of our path to be up because for the left side, you have to go up, right? From the left side, you must go up because, I mean, to go from the left to the ancestor, there's no way to go down or go right. or So you have to go up. So you, you go up and then it's what here, what we're doing here is we're just replacing all the values from our f to be up so it's going to replace this with up and up and then now we just return f plus s which is going to be up up R rl so up up rl and it returns that okay and after that um that's the answer and this code actually works it runs and yeah that's basically the gist of how to do this problem um i hope you guys understand this video it's it was this is kind of kind of a long video to go over but yeah Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. It was, uh, it was a pleasure for this one. But yeah, I'll probably go over the lowest common ancestor next time. But yeah, peace.